Let's talk a little bit about grow lights, whether it is a distributed array bar or if it's a quantum board. Let's make it simple for everybody because I've been asked several times, how do I decide on what kind of light to get? About the lights that I'm using, uh, this is a Vibosun VS1000. And this other light is a Growstar MN-W3000. The Vibosun is around 100 watts, whereas the Growstar light is around uh, 220 watts. Now, if you're looking for a light, the advantage of the uh, distributed bar array versus the quantum board is that uh, LED lights oftentimes tend to push their light more downward than outward. And in order to get enough wattage or enough power, if you want to think about it that way, for a plant to grow, with a quantum board, you have to increase the intensity of the light at the central point. And you could actually get too high of a reading and start to get leaf burn on the top of your plant. And so that's something that you want to keep in mind. So with the distributed array of bars of LED lighting, it uh, spreads that light out more uniformly over the top of a plant. And that's one of the primary benefits. You don't have as much uh, fall off as a quantum board when you are growing in a grow tent. Or for example, in this case, it's kind of an open grow uh, using uh, an indoor office area. Both have dimmer knobs. You will want to be able to fine tune or adjust your light if needed with uh, too much light. For example, on peppers where the leaves get a little smaller with the uh, plant is uh, approaching the higher intensity of light. If you have not enough light, you'll notice that what they call the internode, which is a fancy way of saying the distance from one leaf to another leaf is going to be stretched out more than normal. You could set the dimmer knob to the reading that uh, you'd like to have for the uh, size of the plant or perhaps the height of the plant. I am not uh, promoting any particular grow light. Most grow lights have their light output measured in what's called a PPFD map. And if you're buying a light uh, from a manufacturer, they should supply that. If you're buying a light off of a company such as Amazon, uh, they should list that also. Be sure to look for it. And keep in mind that there are a few uh, companies out there that uh, will fake readings when you get into some of the off-brand cheap knockoff lights. By and large, if a light is a bad light, you'll see comments listing people's complaints, and that's one of the ways to stay away from those. Notice that the numbers are um, varying across the map, and this is at a 12-inch hanging height. The dimensions is something that you look for. You notice on this one that even though it is listed as a three foot by four foot map, that most of the usable light is in the 24 inch by 32 inch zone underneath the light. So if I were to add these individual boxes up within that area, and divide it by the number of boxes that gives me an average PPFD reading for that grow light. You're looking at those maps. Oftentimes in the center of the light is where the light is strongest. You'll try to uh, find one that uh, the center reading within the one foot by one foot area directly underneath the grow light is uh, not over uh, 700 PPFD. And the other amazing thing that you could uh, find out from using a daily light integral calculator is that if you have the preferred DLI ran through that calculator, you may only have to run your grow light for fewer hours per day. Most plants prefer a dark period of uh, four to six hours. Examples of lesser uh, light loving plants would be uh, lettuce and microgreens but you'll notice that I can dial back the hours that I run that light I just showed you to eight hours and be right in the range that's ideal for those plants. Now I've done 
the same thing, this is not just conjecture, uh, with a 100 watt GrowStar quantum board, ran it 12 hours a day and had some of the biggest romaine lettuce heads that I've ever seen. So this is a perfect way to be able to uh, dial in have one light that serves multiple needs. This first slide is uh, for computing the daily light integral uh, based off the average PPFD from the map that I showed earlier. And the average uh, for the core area that that light was uh, putting uh, out was around 24 inches by 32 inches. And you can see in the first field that I've entered that uh, PPFD as 631. Then below that would be on your lamp timer, how many hours a day are you running that? The average of the uh, daily light integrals needed to grow those vegetables for optimal conditions is going to be around 30. So that is slightly more than what I need. I could probably diminish the hours. That's another benefit of using the calculators that you can save money by not uh, spending more than you have to to light your grow. Now the next slide that I'm going to show you is where I took the area on that PPFD map that was outside of the core area where it had the lower numbers added those up and put those into the calculator. Uh, that gives me the values that shows that uh, there is enough light hitting those outer areas in a three foot by four foot area to help perform the needs for the plant's photosynthesis. And that is beneficial because what is going to happen with most plants is that uh, they get most of their energy from that inner area where they're getting the proper amount of light and the outer parts of the plant are still uh, adding to the uh, needs of the plant. Yes, it would be better to have the higher values out in those areas, but since a plant is one cohesive organism, it uh, helps to drive the productivity and the general health of the plant. I took the original reading at 631 on the PPFD and I reduced by the uh, total number of hours of day, found that I could run that light for about eight hours a day and still hit around uh, 18 uh, DLI, which is just uh, a little beyond the optimal DLI for uh, things like lettuce and a lot of your cool season crops. So by using this online tool, you'll be able to dial in your light, no matter which manufacturer it is, and get the most healthy plants at the optimal hours per day that you need to use the light. Two, it will allow you to find out whether or not you need to upgrade your light, add an additional light, or completely revamp your lighting system. So hope this information is helpful to anyone who's out there growing. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more information. And thanks for watching.